Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today, we're gonna mount our rudder bracket. We're gonna make some modifications to our strut. And we're gonna mount our steering servo in uh, what I think will be a unique way for y'all. If you're like me, by golly, you're at the point of the build where you start getting sloppy because you just want to get it done. Uh, so I'm counting on you to hold me accountable. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of the build so far. And I'm going to try to still do things well without just jamming through it to get the stupid boat done and out of here. Here's the thing you guys have been yelling at me about. I know you've been yelling at your screen telling me I forgot to cover this hole right here. I have now covered said hole and uh, it turned out well. If you've been following this since way back when, my hope was that my sump tank would fit in there perfectly and it does. What do you know? It'll be inserted like Che. We'll put a piece of foam in here to hold this guy in place and in line, right? She goes in and pops down into place right here. Reason for all of this is if I mount this guy at a nice sharp angle, we talked about this in an early video. If I mount this guy at an angle like this and then I and this is tough, man, but if you bend the tubing around where you're picking up from this bottom corner, man, you can suck every last drip of fuel out of this thing. So if you're like me and you get two penalty laps, you can still finish the race. <laughs> so that worked out well. I was pleased. Let's mount some stuff. Oh, let's talk about this a little bit. So we, talk, we did talk about our rudder bracket uh, in a previous video. Um, doesn't really matter how we got where we are, but let's talk about it. We're going to mount it on this side, eliminating the typical L bracket that you would lose, use to mount it to the transom. Yeah, we're losing it. <laughs> we're making that go away. I have already drilled these holes out. So my mounting screws pass through and they will actually attach to T-nuts on the back side here. We talked earlier also about adding a piece of eighth inch material out here to make this a little bit thicker, a little bit stronger, as well as to move it over a little bit and give me a little bit more left turn clearance. I have changed that because I've, I've decided for no reason whatsoever uh, that I want this as far to the left here as I can get it. Uh, Cause it's still not super far away from my prop. You know, a lot of boats will have it really wide separation. Uh, I'm not sure that's a great idea, uh, but I do think uh, close to three inches is probably a good plan. Um, let's see what it is. Let's see. Yeah, the center line's right about here. Yeah, we're, we're a little under three inches if we go here, which I think is good. Uh, for no re again, for no reason whatsoever. So what I've done is I've actually cut a piece of 1 8 and I glued it on the interior here. Okay, and it's glued really thoroughly all the way around to make this super duper strong. One quarter inch, put a one quarter inch block here because I want a thing for it to butt up against. If it's not butted up against anything, then it's just relying on these screws and I believe the bracket will probably start to move. If I put it here, it cannot rotate easily. So the trick is going to be to make our holes and mount it with this fitting up here perfectly. I'm not really sure that that's going to happen. Hopefully it's not a little ways away. If it's a little bit too tight, we can always hog our holes out slightly, I suppose, and try to get where we want to go. But we're going to try to make it perfect first try. Let me grab a chair and let's do it. Is this a good choice? No. I want the trailing edge of this bracket to be just below the, uh, the surface here. Yes, I could mount it all the way down and you say, oh, that makes the rudder deeper. No, for some reasons that we'll also talk about later, I actually want this guy mounted a little bit higher. So that's what I'm doing. 
and you can see I set that block at the correct depth when I glued it on. Let me try to find a better way to hold it there. My hand won't be in the way. How'd we do? Excellent. So I have a really cheapy little burr here that came in a bunch of junk I bought at an estate sale. I don't know if it's gonna work. I have some better ones. Well, not better, they're worn out. These are, these are Dremel ones that are really, really excellent. There's a link in the description to this video if you'd like to order some of these. I need to order new ones, uh, which I will do soon, but I wanna do this now. Not bad. Oh, let's talk about what we're doing, the diameter here. This is actually too big. So I'm gonna use this one to get started because the tip is really, really good. And this one, which is thoroughly worn out, I'll use it later because it's actually pretty close to the right size. See that? So the T-nut can fit in there. You'll see, hang on. Yeah, I think this TP1 wore out already. We'll get the job done. There we go. That's really all I need to get us thoroughly started. And then I should be able to poke this one through there, no problem. Think that's hot? I think so. I'm gonna find out right now. That's not too bad. Let's prepare our tea nuts. I don't like, well, it's just totally unnecessary to have these teeth be really big like this, because to install it, you have to grab pliers and jam this into the wood and it separates the wood. This thing with the tiniest of tabs, it will not want to rotate. And so let's make them smaller. How am I gonna hold it? Let's do this here. Grinder? Okay. I know that's hot. I guess that'll work. I think we're probably going to have to um, perhaps take one of these off altogether. Uh, in a cut like right across there. Because I don't think there's going to be enough room here to really fit properly. Doesn't matter. Okay, anyway, there we go need you. So this does a couple things for me. First of all, it makes those short like we wanted them. And second of all, it will help me know when we have ground enough. Anytime you're hogging out a hole like this, it's a natural tendency to not get it real straight and square. Square hole, you know what I mean. The, anyway, yeah, quit laughing at me. No, I'm not gonna try to cut it. We've already proven I can't do that. Let's go across this way. Please don't tell Jackson. that one dry for a minute. I don't want to get the wood all wet. Should dry, dry pretty quick is warm baby warm. Come on now. Right 
further yet. Probably goes in easy over here. A little easier. I'm going to extend this out a little bit so I can get the widest part of it further down in towards the inboard side of that hole. Yeah, there we go. See, that's what you want, because I really don't want to distort the wood. You, you put a lot of stresses on the wood if you have to really cram it through hard. Oh, yeah, bingo. That one's, uh, oh, you know, they might bump into each other. We should check that as well. We may have to cut both sides of the, uh, of the uh, lower piece. Yeah, they will. Look at that, would you? Uh -huh. Let's take one of the flats off this one so we're not taking too much off the other. I think that's enough. Oh, I'm sorry you had to see that, pal. It's a little iron, it's good for you. Let's set that one aside now because now it's wet. So there's our upper and our lower, we're ready to go. We'll come back and glue that in a minute. Let's move on. Yeah, what, you want to clean that excess off of there? I, th I think it's okay. Yeah, it's fine. <sighs> okay, done. Moving on over here. We're gonna JB weld this thing. Before I removed it, we had this set up in our boat before. If you're, if you're just now joining us, put this in your boat, get it at the depth you want, the angle you want. And then I just came along with, a, with something pointed and I just scribed right at the bottom where it stuck out from the hull. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, there's a really light scribe line right here, and I scribed both sides so I could see it well. Okay, now the problem that we're having here is that this sticks through the wood, this being the bottom of the boat now, is right here, and so you have this gap where you would not believe how much water is gonna come spraying up inside the boat through that gap and the typical thing what everybody does almost everybody does except me and now you is fill this with silicone they're going to put it in squirt a bunch of silicone in there that of course is tacky we're going to come up with a different solution here where is a piece of sandpaper let's scuff that a little bit piece of, I'm going to say 80, 100? Really? I'll be darned. We're just going to scuff just this lower section, the part where you would squirt the silicone if you want to do this in a tacky and cheesy fashion, which as I say, we're at that point in the build, but we're not going to do it. We are not going to sacrifice. We are not going to compromise. At least not on anything that's on video. All right, these are our mounting pieces from inside the boat. Tape, tape, radio box tape. Radio box tape, uh, scotch tape, clear tape, works great. Here's what you're gonna do. Did that really? Got my fan on. Let's go ahead and put it on right now. We're going to put it on here. Stay out of my way. Now, I hate laying tape down. Oh, about there. And we're going to fold it over. Pinch these ends together. Okay. That's just a little excess. Do the same on the other one. What we're doing here is we're uh, creating our non-stick surface. An air bubble. Oh no, it won't be perfect. And we're going to bolt it on.
snugged it up a little bit just by hand. Okay, I can see my scribe line. We're going to install this, taking the scribe line all the way down to this surface. I mean, you've already figured out what I'm doing here, so I could just stop right now, but we're going to see this through. Let's see, get these lined up the same. Somewhere around there. Take one more piece. I might even stick this piece on later. Stay there now, don't go stick into the... Thank you. We're gonna need that in the front when we finish up our, our fill work here. Yeah, I think we'll fill it first and then we'll clean up the end. Might not even need to put that piece on, but we have it just in case. Okay, JB Weld. Brand new tubes. How much? I don't know. That's probably way too much. In fact, I'm sure it is. Look at all that. Why didn't you stop me? Is that enough? Now there's too much black, huh? I don't know. I think so. We're going for it. Dude, this doesn't have to be strong, it just has to set. If the mix isn't perfect, it won't have crazy full strength, but... I think we'll be okay. I have JB Quick, too. I probably should have used that, and then we could see the result right away. Is he still breathing? Just working on forcing it down in there. Hey, buddy. From the back side of the slot, pretty much. Be really hard for you to see it on the video, but I can see it working its way down inside there. Hey, piggy baby. You're a good sugar pig. She's a pretty good shop dog. She hangs out with me here quite a bit. Ringo, on the other hand, turns out he is not a shop dog, which is somewhat disappointing. I might turn him into one yet. Who knows? All right, now what are we going to do? What do I do with that rag? Paper towel. All right, I know it's a paper towel. Just putting that across the front there because I don't want this uh, JB Weld to decide to run out of there. We're going to need something kind of flat to get in there with. Is this going to cut it? Oh, you know what? I know that we have. Yes. Of course, we'll be able to follow up on this and lightly sand that real quick and that'll come right off real pretty like.
hey, on video again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> just right. Yeah, you do. Here lately. Okay, we're all set. That shouldn't be too awful long. There you go. Isn't that pretty? What were we doing next? Steering servo. Uh, some 30 thou. Yeah. 30 thou G10. It's hard to hold that on there real square. Do that twice. going to mount this with a little 440 screws. I happen to have some, these are too short, but we will use tapered screws like this. I know a lot of guys use those uh, wood screws, right? And you just run the screws into the wood and then it works loose and then it gets all water soaked in, in behind there because it works loose and then the wood rots out and they start to strip and then your servo falls out. It's really embarrassing. These are kind of cool, even the tapers, because they center this thing up. I don't use the little rubbers anymore. Okay, so we're actually going to use these. And so we need to drill a few holes here. 107-ish. Let's... Sorry, the lighting is not great in here. When the light's beating in through this window, I imagine you probably can't see a thing. Ooh, 103, I got so close first try. 108.5. I like it. I got an idea. Put that back where it belongs. We're going to beautify these later. We're going to scuff both sides. One side because the we're going to glue these nuts on, the other side because we got to attach it to the boat. And we kind of want it to stay there. Okay, kind of like that. That ring still has a little bit of alcohol on it. Should pull the dust out of the sanding grooves. Kind of, sort of, maybe a little bit. And there we go. Super. Come on. Gotcha. Okay. G Flex. I've learned to pop the top and relieve the pressure. Because if it goes from the cool of the night and then the warmth of the day, and then you pop them open when you're ready to pour it, you get a big old glob pop out of there. You'll be like, oh! Press that. Man, these things are weird. Here we go. Why don't you come over here? along with some 406 colloidal silica. Mm, 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 mm. I said it right, I'm sorry, long-standing joke. It's personal joke. Never mind. Maybe I'll edit that out. Look how quick that settles when it's warm. Need very little. Probably use the remnants of that JB weld, huh? Should 
Should we mix more? Because we can use it back here too. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We'll just make sure we got enough. That should be way more than enough, which is my tendency. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, nah, I'm not going to keep you at the ready. It might leak out when it's this warm if they're left upside down. I should have, I intended to put a little bit of PVA on those screws before I put them in there, but odds are the epoxy won't run down inside there. I'm going to put a little bit of wet epoxy on here. And then we're going to thicken it and go back and do it again. This kind of allows it to actually sneak up underneath the nut a little bit. Really glue it well. When we're ready, these will now get glued into the hull right here behind where the servo mounts, right? Oh yeah, we're going to square them all up, make them look all perfect because no one else will ever see it but you and me. But because this goes out to the whole wide world, I'm stuck with making things look really nice even when they cannot be seen. Now we're going to thicken that and put that on here, right? No. We're going to put it in here first. Same routine. I want these holes, well, this, this a little more so. I want these holes to be, to thoroughly soak in some epoxy so that I don't have to worry about water intrusion into that area seeping in later. Okay, now we'll thicken it, huh? With our colloidal silica. Ding, 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 ding. Second time in my life that I've said that correctly. It's a very special day for me. Looks good. Somebody say good enough. Okay, good, thank you. Let's set you all the way out of the way. About like that. Let's just make sure that we don't have to worry about that stuff running down. Uh, this one was the bottom, yeah. No, I didn't wet these out. There's nothing for it to soak into. Come on. Don't be like that. Okay, let's see. This way. Why did I cut? Oh yeah, because the two clashed. 
I didn't even check it to make sure they didn't when we got done. Hope they don't. And we're done. Okay, so how'd your stuff turn out? It's been, it's been a while since I actually shot video, so I don't really remember where we stopped. I think we, uh, we modified our strut, right? Did yours turn out good? We got our, uh, our, um, it's right over there. Um, JB Weld, we got our JB Weld, duh. Uh, filled in there and so now when we mount this on the boat it'll mount something like that and this part will actually be through the floor of the hull. So someone the other day asked me why I didn't mount the strut on the transom. You see that on a lot of boats and a lot of divisions they mount out here. Well I can't have it that far back legally so I mounted on the floor in here. Yes I could mount it in here on the transom and then you know the strut dangles down underneath like that uh, that's a doable thing and uh, the, the gentleman's argument which was a valid one was that it's stronger to mount it back here onto this one quarter instead of here on this 3 16th remember this is 1 16th floor with a 1 8 overlay on it uh, so slightly thinner and maybe there's some truth to that this might be stronger uh, the trouble back here is it it stands alone, if you will. It's not captured up here. So it can flex. Same as this can flex, but this is captured all the way around. Uh, so it's debatable. Uh, plus, if I mounted here, as you might have already thought about, I would be mounting it dead straight. Uh, so to get an angle... Wait, where's the turn fin? Over there. To get a slight angle on it, I would have to either shim it, which is no good unless you actually got a tapered shim you know sticking a shim under this edge and then tightening it all we're doing is flexing the aluminum and would it work yes it's just not super cool uh, so I would have to either mill this at an angle or shim it uh, don't like either of those options so we mount it to the floor you do what you want uh, plenty of options if you're going dead straight this is actually a pretty neat idea uh, then you're not you know worried about holes and screws in the floor and all that and you have all this nice heavy material here that makes you feel really good even though as I've already explained I don't think it's a whole lot different okay we also mounted our uh, the part back here the rudder bracket good golly it's gonna be one of those days um, and uh, you can see that we just used uh, I think we talked about this I have my T nuts glued in on the back there I did a really rough job at that but uh, once I cover it, hopefully I'll never have to look at it again. You got your two mounting screws and a support block here to stabilize the thing just for a little added stability. This should be super duper stout. Should work awesome. You like my little homemade ball end wrench there? This is actually for quick draw cylinders. If you've ever had to remove a quick draw cylinder, you understand. Uh, so anyway, that, that's how that mounts. It's wonderful. Nice and tight. Ooh, super solid. Uh, probably the most secure possible way to mount your rudder. Uh, big heavy bracket. Don't like it, but I did get a thinner, smaller one, and it had a smaller pin, and I tried to adapt it, and then I thought, no, that's dumb. Uh, we're just using that one. I already built my shaft here. Oh, you remember we made uh, a couple of cool little uh, uh, backers. You know, guys are always either drilling and just putting screws into the wood, which eventually it gets water intrusion and rots out and they start to strip and fall out. It's a pain in the rub. Or they'll put a piece of threaded aluminum back here, uh, which is fine. I like the lock nut idea. There's lock nuts here glued to, is that bothering you as much as it is me? Lock nuts here glued to a piece of G10 and then glued to the wood. It's just slicker than heck. 
I actually did buy a ball end for this. You ever try to create one of these yourself? It's pretty tiny, 1 16th. And I use these uh, Tabor Head 440. Tabor Head 440s. This is 3 8 in length, not quite long enough. I ordered some halves, okay? So you're going to use half inch 440 tapered head. It centers up really nicely in the mount of the, the hole on the servo. Self-centered, runs through the lock nut so you don't have to crank it down hard and hope it stays. No, it'll bind up nice in that lock nut and it stays so you don't have to set it really tight. I had somebody give me a hard time about my mount. Uh, I don't know if you've seen that, but I think it's a, it's a whole separate video. Uh, subscribe, like, subscribe to my channel. Go back through all the videos. There's so much to see. And I realize that in some of the videos, I put a lot of stuff about a lot of different things in the video. So, sorry, you got to watch the whole thing to pick up on all kinds of stuff. I did a solo video, I'm pretty sure, on the, um, yeah, this thing right here. Can you see it? On the throttle servo and how to build its mounting bracket. And the same thing, little 440 uh, aluminum screws. Uh, glued using G-Flex to an aluminum bracket. Really quick and easy to change your servo if you need to. Two screws, the whole thing's out in your hand. Two more screws, the servo's off. Uh, really easy if you have this thing handy in your box. But uh, what I was getting at is someone complained the way I mount these that I mount them solid. He said, oh, that's gonna, that's gonna blow up that servo, the gears, you know, um, because of the input that it's gonna get. I also have a nearly solid, this is also in that video, the uh, uh, shaft that connects the servo to the uh, carburetor is has just a small bit of flex in the middle of it and then two clips. And uh, he said, oh, that's gonna ruin your servo, all the strain on the gears in the servo. No, that throttle moves really easily. Tell me where the strain is coming from. There is none, unless you don't adjust your end points correctly and the throttle hits all the way at full throttle and you're sitting there and you're pounding the throttle and that servo is struggling against that thing and the motor's shaking and yes, now you're beating up your gears. No, just stop a little bit short. You won't know the difference. I'm telling you, most of the time with my boats, I'm driving them between half and three quarter throttle and, and you almost can't notice any difference whatsoever, whatsoever when you pull the trigger further. It, it's weird, it's a strange phenomenon, but there it is. Uh, when it's tuned right, It'll lean out just really pretty at that little three-quarter half throttle point and haul button. You actually open it up and you're like, oh, I ain't got nothing. Uh, uh, so anyway, uh, I'm sorry, that's just, not, that's just not a thing. Yes, it'll pick up more of the vibration from the hull, I suppose. It, what I'm talking about is if you don't use those rubbers, you know, they come with these cheesy little rubber things that just squish out and, and look stupid and, and uh, get oil soaked. Uh, no, I just mount it straight up. Now this one, can you say uh, it's going to take a little bit more beating? Uh, yes, it's directly connected to the rudder. There's no isolation, no movement. You know why I like that? Because I don't want my rudder to be able to move on its own by wiggling a rubber mount. No, solid mount that thing, the tiniest input, and the tiniest change in this steering, and this thing will turn like right now. Uh, so I don't want it doing that on its own, solid mount. I've done this forever. Uh, I did ruin a servo in uh, a gas boat and it's because I blew the boat over and uh, the rudder hit funky and it bent the rod and it uh, ruined the gears. Uh, just from general use, no, never had one fail. Never had one fail. Solid mount. This is the way to do it. Let's talk about the shaft. This is free. Yeah, you can go order it, but it's free. How is it free? You go to your local uh, range, anywhere that they target shoot these things, you'll find them all over the place. Or just ask a guy, hey, you got a broken one? Yeah, he will. Uh, do you see this end here? Yeah, it broke, the tip kind of broke out of it, and it's garbage, they, they throw it away. They don't, they don't mess with it, they're cheap. Okay, so get you an aero shaft, grab your carburetor cleaner, clean this stuff off so people can't tell it's an aero shaft. And uh, there are places, uh, there's a company called Zip Kits. They actually make an entire kit uh, this is the way it sounds, Z-I-P-P-K-I-T-S. You can find them online. Uh, they sell a lot of gas boat stuff, but they have a, a steering linkage kit that comes with a carbon, sh I believe it comes with the carbon shaft, and with these cool little aluminum ends through which you put your four, 440? I think it's 440. Yeah, 440 rod, 
and I, I use simple ball ends and everyone tells me that's not going to hold up that's going to break dude i've bent rods i've ruined that servo uh i've hit these things hard used it this way for years i have never had one of these fail i have never had one pull out this is all you need don't overkill it don't overthink it you don't need a big fancy anodized aluminum one though they look really cool uh, uh, go for it you know knock yourself out um, these little things here tiny little uh, uh two what is it is it 232 I, they use 32 on these little ones little tiny bolt lock nut on the back sides again same reasons so you don't have to crank it real hard you just run it through the lock nut kind of set it down and you are good to go they have all of the clearance that you need can you see the shaft ro rotates freely that's all i need what's missing right now is a washer uh, during final assembly i will put a washer underneath this head that's large enough that even if this did happen to pop off that ball, which isn't going to happen, I mean, come on, something really dramatic happens. But anyway, it won't be able to pass that washer, okay? So something really dramatic happens, it pops off that ball, it's still captured and will still work, and you will not lose your steering, which is a good thing. I don't normally use aluminum arms. I ordered some, I can't remember why. And so here it is, and I thought, well, I'll use it. It's really pretty. I'll cut it you know cut it and radius the end and then you won't see the anodizing but uh, them's the brakes i don't like the extra length so we're making that go away you don't need this catching your uh, you know your hose for your water lines or anything so we'll knock that down and make it short but that's how you make this thing you're going to predispose it when you install it i have my rudder turned ever so slightly to the left right because this boat is going to want to turn all the time we're going to set the turn fin with a slight bit of toe out and by out, I mean away from the center line of the hull. So the turn fin will actually be slightly, I'm exaggerating, slightly towards the inside of the course. All right, because it's going to want to turn. We're doing the same thing with our strut. And of course, we have slight angle on our strut. So it wants to turn all the time. You're going to say, gosh, I have to dial in some left rudder. Yes, who cares? Uh, the boat, when it's up in the air and it's walking, it's going to ride on this rudder and this turn fin. They're going to be pointed the same, and the hull is actually slightly canted out to the right. Nobody cares. You're in the air and you're cruising. Boy, you set that rudder, you're turning right now because the boat's going to want to do that. Uh, but the point being, uh, anyway, I have this set slightly to the left right now because it will be trimmed to the left when the boat is finished. Who knows how far, but a little bit. And you can see that I've offset this arm slightly. I'm going to say to the left, but counterclockwise, because that's what I want. When you set your steering, this thing's going to be, like I said, a tiny bit of input is going to be turning and turning like right now. And so really your target is kind of getting your linkage to do 90 degrees in the middle of your turn. Plus this is the most, uh, oh, how am I going to say it? The, the most reliable in distance. Oh boy, that's a terrible way to say it. Let me, let me think. Because of the arc of the servo, the servo arm, right up here at 90, this is pretty reliable, right? I mean, I get a certain distance for a certain number of degrees, let's say. Once you're down here, it's not the same. You're not getting that distance travel. See what I mean? You're getting up and down, and same is true over here. So in the point where your steering will most often be, you want first of all the most input and the most reliable with each degree means so much distance let's say okay does that make sense so try to target your linkage to where it will land in this neighborhood for your initial i'm going straight you want it slightly overset that way for i'm turning my brains out it'll actually be slightly overset this way okay if you find yourself needing to go anywhere near lock, you don't have enough fin or there is something else wrong with your boat. Uh, or something really, really bad has happened and right now you're spinning. So uh, yeah, enjoy that. Um, so that's what we have done here. Uh, these are glued in with G10. Oh, by the way, uh, where do I get mine? These are not from Zip Kits. Zip Kits one, I believe they're a little bit smaller diameter. It uses a smaller rod. Uh, because I'm cheap and I don't want to go buy any, I use free stuff free wonderful carbon rod oh man um, I use free rods and I make mount these I make on the lathe they insert three quarters of an inch and then there's grooves cut in them so that when you epoxy this thing in there it has a, a place to capture epoxy I use G flex for the installation of these also I know people that use um, uh, zap um, star bond is, is what I use you know yeah, 
CA, CA glue, and bam, you've instantly built your shaft. Uh, and I'll bet it works fine. Um, I don't do it. Uh, I, I epoxy it and then set it aside and wait, and there you go. This is 440 threaded rod. I don't like a lot of threads exposed, so I try to set it up where I have a small amount of adjustment on each end. I don't know if you can see that. There's maybe an eighth of an inch uh, of adjustment on each end uh, still available uh, to shorten if I need to. Uh, and obviously I can lengthen it quite a bit because I have the threads running way up inside. That is too much information on one thing. Moving on. Okay, so we've built that. You've done this. Uh, we've made some more holes in the boat. Small hole here. Drainage. Slightly larger hole here. A little more rapid drainage. Uh, same thing on each side. Couple holes back here in the back. These I set fairly high because I won't be covering these. Every time I come in off the water, I'll tip the boat all the way up, back slightly, tip it side to side. Any water that's gotten in the hole, which will be a lot, and I don't care who you are, how well you seal it up, uh, will run out of these holes quickly and easily, and boom, I'm ready to go on the next heat. These holes will get taped before I run in the morning. This tape's from underneath, believe it or not, the tape will stay. Use radio box tape on that, it'll stay. I've done it. Um, and then after a day, the day of running, you pull the tape off and you tip it and you hope no water comes out because if no water comes out, you've done a nice job and it's well sealed and it breaks my heart when water comes out. That usually means I've knocked a sponson off the boat or like with the stro in the last race, we knocked a big old hole in it right here and it was full of water. Yeah, the hole's gone, I'm ready to go next day. Okay, so you make your hole. How? Yeah, you don't drill them. You remember, you're gonna use, um, yeah, it's on there right now. You're gonna use one of these gnarly burrs. And this this will do the drilling for you and pop right through, okay? That's all you need. Yeah, you use a drill bit, you're gonna blow the wood all up on the back side and it'll look stupid. I know, you'll see it, but it'll look stupid. Okay, and then, uh, so really, I, I can't think of anything else to do here. I'm probably missing some stuff. But we're going to seal the interior and we're going to slap the decks on. We're ready to seal it and slap the decks on after we put some foam in it. A few things I want to talk to you about. I, because I'm weird and anal and I like my boats to last a long, long time. I like them to look great and last a long, long time. I radius all of the sharp edges on the interior. Don't know if you can tell. It's been done all over here. Uh, here, here. Um, here we go. You know how when you cut wood, you can cut it and think, well, I've done a nice job. Well, but anywhere, can you see these little hairs? Anywhere there's little rough, little rough hairs. You know, hairs are no fun. <laughs> or sharp edge, even sharp edges. Hairs for sure, because even though you seal this thing, man, these things will be a water wick and it'll suck water up into your wood. Uh, just literally like a wick. It'll just run in there. You won't believe it. And you'll get these big long streaks, dark streaks in your wood and eventually it'll saturate and then someday you have to repair it and your wood is soaked and ruined and you can't. Um, radius those off. Grab a piece of, uh, oh, probably 220. Ooh, I've done some aluminum or something with that. Here we go. And I just go through and at least knock that corner off everywhere that I can, everywhere within reason. Okay, eh, some areas I don't worry about. But see, I'm never gonna ding it up inside here, but certainly inside your engine well area, everything should be nice. Oh, I forgot, I haven't put that floor in yet. No, uh, we'll do that. Uh, this has been radiused. You know, just do that everywhere, okay? Grab a piece and spend some time. It's no fun, uh, it takes forever. Um, but it's just kind of a nice move. Deck, this boat is super cool to deck the center section. Super uncool to deck this part because it uh, obviously it does a number of different things. Uh, it, and so uh, it's a pain in the butt. Um, when you're doing the center here, this is easy. You're gonna use, just use straight pieces and do a really nice job. Uh, uh, Pre-build your piece really nice and straight uh, for a couple of reasons. It'll save sanding later. Uh, so try to make it fit really nice even here out to the edge. Boy, just make it come right to the edge. Go ahead and just finish it now. If you overhang it, don't leave yourself an eighth of an inch thinking, well, I need to leave a lot of room. Nah, you'll go crazy sanding it and then you'll accidentally sand other surfaces and you'll have made your boat ugly. Don't build ugly boats. Make the piece fit nice. But anyway, straight piece here, straight piece here. I'm gonna use 1 16th 
uh, 1.5 millimeter. Actually, I use I use uh, finish ply from Aircraft Spruce. Look them up, finish ply. You can buy it at a whole bunch of places. Finish, F-I-N-N-I-S-H, is in the place of Finland. I don't know why they call it that, if it's really from Finland or not. Two reasons I'm using 16th. Number one, because I have a lot of it. Uh, number two, because I made this front section the perfect shape to accept 16th and I won't have to sand it way down. You know, if I put one millimeter or one thirty second on here, I have a little bit of sanding to do and uh, um, because I'm a lazy person and I'm kind of running out of time, I just want to slap my 16th on here. It's going to be almost flawless when I put it on. We'll do a quick sand and it'll be ready to rock and roll. Uh, number two reason, uh, strength. I, I want this center box to be really strong and there's a large opening here. This will be removed. You'll see we'll do it later and this will be removed. So we're kind of counting on creating two really strong boxes that are attached on either end. And of course we have this center piece here and this is reinforced underneath. So this is pretty strong. Uh, but really we're relying on this, this, uh, let's look at this, think of this as one box and this is a separate box. We want the box to be torsionally strong. Okay, so that's why we're going to go ahead and use 16th on the top just to add a little extra. I need this piece, so I want it to come out because I have another thing I want to show you. There you are. Come to Papa. Okay, now, if you're building this boat, this matters. You can use this same trick on any boat, and it's really cool. When you're laying your decking on this portion, I want you to leave. We have a ruler. We do. I want you to leave one-eighth of an inch. Okay? Cut this nice. Make it nice and straight. Hopefully you built your boat nice and straight. Even if you didn't, you know, if this, uh, if this underlayment here is kind of crooked, make this deck piece really nice and straight, leaving one-eighth of an inch. You're going to overhang it by one-eighth of an inch. You're going to do the same over here when you, when you attach it. Okay? Reason being, that will leave you, if you built this boat exactly as I'm building this boat, that'll leave you a five and one half inch gap between the pieces. Why? Because that's the way the cowling is built. Where'd it go? Here we are. Cowling mold. Ruler. You've got a five and a half inch wide deck section that will be laid up with the cowling. Okay, so it'll sit really pretty on this spot. Now, up in the front here, I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do because I want, as we've discussed before, or if you're just now joining us, I want a two inch wide section of deck to cross here. And so I might have it. In, you know, a part of this piece or a part of this piece, depending upon how my wood lays out. Or I'm kind of weird. I might actually take a big sheet and try to build both or build it as one unit and then cut it. I don't know. I haven't quite figured that out yet. You're on your own, man. Uh, I'm going to leave two inches here. And we'll try to do a nice little radius at each corner. When I laid up this mold, I left a sharp corner here and it came all the way forward to the bull nose so it would land here that's too far you know we're taking water here because you're going to take water here trust me uh, i don't want it to run into the engine well really easily so we're gonna we're gonna put two inches worth of decking here so if you get one of these from me it'll come like this but you're going to cut this back and you'll just mate it you know you can do a, a large radius here uh, you can do the whole thing as a radius whatever you want to do uh, and you can cut this and make it fit perfectly to your boat. That's how that's going to get done. What else was I going to tell you? Okay, so I'm going to start laying those up pretty soon, right? So if you need one, maybe I'll do an entirely, I will do an entirely separate video. But let me tell you right now how this is going to work. If you're building this boat, if you're building the ML Boatworks Eliminator and you need an Eliminator cowling, I can build it for you. But you have to prove to me that you need it. Don't just email me and say, yes, I want one. And I take all my time and I send you one. You never build a boat. You got to show me a boat that looks like this. Then I'll build you that. 
okay? I hate building stuff that doesn't get used. Um, I'm not trying to pick on anybody, but just trust me, it happens a lot. I make stuff, I send it, it never, ever gets finished. And there's great reasons. I totally get it. It's hard to do this. It's hard to find the time. Prove it, I'll build it, okay? But you got to be patient. It's going to happen on my time. I am but one man and I am a very busy man. All right, there we go. We're going to deck it. I have videos. I'm not shooting a new one. I will link, stay in this video to the end and you will see little squares pop up. Okay, they're rectangles. Come on. Okay, little rectangles will pop up. One of them is going to be about how to skin the boat. And there's going to be another one about using two-part expanding foam because you're going to put, I'm going to put foam inside my sponsons to do two things. It'll strengthen the sponson. We'll pour it in here and it expands like crazy. And it's hard and it sticks like crazy so it will help glue our sponson together and it will give us impact resistance in our sponson. We need to seal it first. So you're going to watch the video about sealing and you're going to seal the interior. When that sets, you're going to put in your pour foam and then you're going to put your skins on. That's three things to show you. Sealing, I have a video for that. Pour foam, I have a video for that. Putting the decks on, I have a video for that. Watch them all. I don't think I can link three in this thing. I'll try. Uh, subscribe. Go find it. 101 ways to skin your boat, and 100 of them are wrong. That's what the video is called. All right. Now, also, because you're getting ready to lay your skins on, you should have prepared this outer surface here, or do it now. And by that, I mean you're, you're grabbing your sanding block that I don't have in my hand. Suddenly, this is a piece of sandpaper, and you're sanding this at an angle. Um, you kind of want to meet this angle back here. Okay, and as it comes forward, it flattens out a little bit. So you got to keep that in mind. And once you get up here, it flattens out a whole bunch. All right, so sand it so that when you lay your skins on and you kind of clamp things, the skin doesn't deform because you don't have a nice flat, properly angled surface here. Okay, so do that. A little bit trickier back here, but you can do it. Okay. And it's not super critical back here. We're going to try to clamp all the way at this outer edge. So don't worry if this piece here doesn't line up flawlessly. We're going to stand a whole bunch of thickened epoxy on here. It'll take up the, the gap. And this thing here will fill all in really nicely. Okay. You've, I don't know, you can probably tell here, you tapered sand this here to give yourself a flat landing back here as well. Again, if you don't or if it's not perfect, that's okay. The epoxy will help. But when you think about it, we're clamping down here on just this thin little piece. This is all that's holding it. Uh, so try to make it fit nicely. And then when we do it, we're going to stand a whole bunch of epoxy back here so that it holds really, really well. I hear you screaming about the weight of the foam. I get it. Uh, poor foam is kind of heavy. Make sure you buy the two pound foam. That doesn't mean you're adding two pounds. That means if you poured out these two full quarts, you'd get two pounds worth. Um, but it is heavier than pool noodles, but all pool noodles do is lay here and they don't do anything for you. They are only here in case you knock a huge hole in your boat and it goes dead. Uh, first of all, well, yes, you're probably going to knock a huge hole in your boat and it's probably going to go dead. But you know what? If you didn't put any in here and build the boat well, it's not going to sink unless you knock both sponsons clean off. Because if you build it well, you have a compartment here. Compartment here, compartment here, compartment here. You got four different compartments of air. It shouldn't sink. But again, it's possible you blow them all the way off. So we're putting foam in. Backing all the way up. Pour foam will give you strength. Yes, it'll add a little bit of weight. This boat is super light. It's going to be flighty. I'm sorry it is. It's got all this surface area here and none back here. A little bit of weight up here isn't going to kill us, man. Uh, don't put a whole ton in here. Go watch the video. It'll show you how to do it. What else? I think we're there. We are ready to skin this thing. And I'm not coming back to you until this thing is skinned. Go watch those videos. Finish your boat. Get it to this point. Contact me. And I will build this for you. And we can put them together. I think we're going to build boat. Piggy, aren't you excited, baby? Jackson is. Yeah.